Hey there, Joey from dayjobhacks.com. Thanks for tuning in. I'm super pumped today to have Attila Odri here. He is a legend in the industry, and I'm sure he doesn't need an introduction, but I will give you a little bit of information. He has done tens of millions of dollars in affiliate marketing. He is somebody that I enjoy talking to. We had a great conversation about affiliate marketing. We're going to talk about that today. For anybody in the space, whether you are a media buyer, a new affiliate, or an advertiser, a product owner, I think you're going to get something from this video. Um, he's been in the industry since the 90s. Uh, started a blog in 2013, imattila.com. Also has a website, bannerslanders.com and transy.com. These are some of his resources that he makes available to other people in our industry. I will not ramble on anymore. Thank you for joining today, Attila. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and where you see the industry going today? Hey, Joey, and hey, everybody watching. Thanks a lot for inviting me on your YouTube channel. I've been a fan for a long time, you know, so it's really cool to finally, you know, chat on video. Um, Thanks, the affiliate marketing industry is awesome. Like, I still believe it's the best way that someone with little money can make lots of money. Of course, um, it's true that there has been a lot of change and a lot of, uh, you know, challenges that come to affiliate marketing. One of these things is rising competition, you know, rising CPM and ad costs. A lot of the old affiliate offers not being available anymore. And tons of new policies and, uh, you know, like uh, challenges like the iOS 14.5 update that took away smart tracking from Facebook ads. So these things pose a lot of challenges. They changed the industry, which caused a lot of affiliates to leave. But I still believe there's no other place like affiliate marketing using paid advertising that can make someone, you know, a millionaire if they really work at it. So... That's awesome. Um, it's true because you can make a lot of money, but back in the day, it was a lot easier, wouldn't you say, than it is today in terms of, uh, like you said, all the rules and stuff. Um, where do you see us going as, as affiliates, I guess, in the future um, as we move forward in trying to create a moat for our own business and, and having an advantage? Um, well, that's a great question. Uh, affiliate marketing in the past used to be about scamming people. Like it was like how crypto is today called player versus player. Your job as an affiliate was to get the conversion to the advertiser. And then the advertiser screwed over the affiliate by charging them hundreds of dollars on their credit card. You know, these were the trials, like yeah. the diet and the skincare products and stuff like that. Or, you know, like taking money on their credit, on their phone bill, you know, like you would get some kind of super offer on your phone. All you had to do to get it was put in, you know, like some special pin that you received in an SMS and boom, when you looked at your bill, hundred dollars, you're like, what the heck, you know? <laughs> yeah, so exactly. these offers are gone. Like there's very little of these offers left. And these are providing, you know, like print money printing machine opportunities for affiliates. Today, affiliate marketing has matured where it's uh, more about, you know, providing value through the whole process. So you run ads which don't mislead, like they're really good ads targeting the ideal uh, customer, the uh, ideal, you know, client for the advertiser. And the advertiser uh, wants this client for long term and they're measuring, you know, like lifetime customer value. So that's where affiliate marketing is shifting to. You're using the super skills of, you know, like testing different kind of ad creatives, right. looking at data and making smart decisions based on the data. So that's where affiliate is heading, I believe. That's awesome. And, and it's funny because I was running a campaign the other day and I actually posted about it uh... And I was running a, a landing page, the old style, you know, where you're trying to be like aggressive and a little bit misleading in your, in your advertising. And then the ad network came to me and said, maybe you should try this instead, which is a little more clean. I made the change and my conversion rate actually went up drastically where the old marketing angles that we used to use, where you're trying to trick somebody into doing something, I find the data proved is not working because people are getting smarter and they're seeing this and they're not falling for it anymore as much as they used to. So it is. I agree. Better. I agree a hundred percent. Like if you read the comments mm -hmm. and by the way, one great tip 
is if you're running Facebook or TikTok ads, always read the comments. You can discover if people like the ad or what they have a problem with, and then you can edit and make a new ad that addresses that problem and you can increase <laughs> conversions this way. Instead of the first word you see is scam. Yeah, exactly. So that's what's happening, right? Like how you said that, you know, your uh, affiliate network said, maybe you should try, you know, less aggressive ads. And then you saw based on the data, like an increase in conversions and your CR went up just yeah. because, you know, people as affiliate marketing and the online advertising space is more mature. A lot of people are already um, exposed or they were exposed to the scam. So the next time they see similar stuff, they're like, fuck, this is a scam, you know? And, <laughs> um, and that's why that's those old ways don't work. And the new ways, which are cleaner, work better. Right. Uh, the fact that you can make millions of dollars as an affiliate marketer obviously draws in a lot of people. Everybody's coming to the industry thinking it's super easy. Do you feel the future of solo affiliates, they're going to be extinct soon? Is there a way that they can improve their odds at actually having success moving into this industry? Uh, yeah, like the, the problem is that, you know, affiliate marketing was dominated by what I like to call the chads. Basically, the bros that don't like to work, they hate computers, they, you know, worship Tim Ferriss and the four hour work week. And these guys, they used to just, you know, like find a lander, change the, the name of the celebrity on the lander, send it to, you know, a coder or just edit in HTML if they knew how to do that and just launch and forget about it. These days, in order to be like a solo affiliate, you have to be like a real technical nerd. You have to know a lot of things. You have to be like a, like a handyman, you know, that has a million skills. Like they can, you know, install your hardwood floors and they can also fix the heating and then fix the hole on the roof, you know, like you have to do everything, design, programming, being creative, copywriting, negotiating, networking, like there's a million hats you have to wear. Right. And this is why now, unfortunately, it's harder because um, things require so much stuff that you do need a team unless you're a super genius that knows all of these things. Right. Yeah. So. And a lot of people coming in think, you know, they take a course or they watch some YouTube videos and they set up a landing page. They spend $50 on ads. It goes completely broke. They think it's a scam or they think, man, like, what did I like? This was not supposed to be a lot easier, but it's definitely, it's not. Yeah. Um, so people who start out, I, I, I almost want to say you should really start on one project and, and learn test yourself. So in your opinion, what do you think is better for a newbie? Should they start out pay-per-click? Should they start out SEO? Should they start both? Should they have one website? Like a lot of people, you know, it's kind of different for everyone, but. Yeah. People always ask me. And uh, first of all, I believe that if someone wants to, you know, quit their job mm -hmm. and become like someone that works online, the best way to walk this path is the way that I went from being broke because, you know, if you, if anybody reads my story, my past was that I used to organize like electronic dance events, like EDM, huge parties. Yep. And then they brought a new rule in Canada, which didn't allow me to make huge parties. So I went to Serbia to organize parties and there the demographics and the economic situation was different. So I lost a shit ton of money and I saw myself being broke. And then my girlfriend said, why don't you look into what your buddy Conrad from Canada is doing online? Because he's buying houses and shit, you know? And that's how I discovered the webmaster community, you know, like people working from home online. And I quickly noted that I can't do what he does because he's like a super coder, you know, like he's super good in math, in, in logical thinking. So he created like a like a company that powers most of the porn sites online. Like, so it's called Meg Bunny Media, like tube sites. Okay. And, but I discovered this kick-ass community where they were talking about how they built a website, like a blog. And then, you know, they put affiliate links and then they made like what in the adult, you know, webmaster industry, they call like PPS, paper sign up. So you could get someone to sign up through your link and you get paid 30 bucks. Yeah. Awesome. And I made my first um, campaign 
I mean, my first website, it was called Old School Adult. I decided to put a super weird niche because I knew that in order to rank, I can't do with a high competition keyword. So I picked like this weird niche. And one week later, I made my first few sales, you know, like three sales. And I was like, holy crap, this works. <laughs> and in the process, you know, as usual, I was networking with people and they saw the text on my side and they were like, who writes this? And then I had this aha moment, like, you know, like I can sell copywriting services. Okay, and, yes. you know, so I started a copywriting company called Content Pimp. And I was offering copywriting services and building blogs. So I was funding my, uh, you know, investments, my blogs, like buying domains, hosting, you know, all this other stuff from offering a service. So going back to your question, I believe if someone wants to go from a nine to five to their own, you know, online business in affiliate marketing, they should bring value, which immediately has a result, like selling your time, you know, for some special talent that you have. Like right. some, you know, it's like someone will be good in copywriting, like me, some will be good in design, someone else will be good in organization, you know, accounting and stuff like that. So find out, you know, what you're good at and then make a website and start selling that. And in next to that, you know, put money back into affiliate marketing and play around and see, you know, which, uh, which area is good for you, you know? Yes, exactly. It's funny because it's kind of the way I got into it as well. I, uh, <clears throat> we all heard of ClickBank. Um, so I started ClickBank way back in early 2000s and had a blog about um, health and wellness and stuff. And I actually ended up doing, uh, I don't know if you ever heard of the uh, truth about abs. <laughs> Have you ever heard yep. of that offer? It's like a legendary offer. And <laughs> I created an article about, you know, how to, some, it was a different way of saying get a six pack because that was the word that was so, um, use. So I tried, I came up with a word that wasn't, um, super competitive and it ended up getting like, like you said, three sales in a week. And you're just like, Whoa, this is amazing. I'm making money. Right. And then you yeah. start to think about, wow, I could, if I just kept at it, eventually it's going to turn into something. And, and then that's how I became hooked on affiliate marketing is once you start seeing your first conversions, it's something to celebrate. So what did it feel like or what was behind your decision to quit your job for affiliate marketing? Uh, I wasn't working like a nine to five job. I, I was doing events. So working for myself, like organizing events. But what happened was why I needed to change was because I lost everything that I had just because of the different, you know, like socioeconomic uh, surroundings, right? Like in Canada, we were charging ticket prices 60 to $80 and here I was in Serbia where it was six to ten dollars, you know, for one ticket, but the demand was sky high, you know, like they want they wanted like a list DJs and all that stuff, but had very, very small, uh, you know, like um, uh, how do you say like spending disposable income? OK, yeah. So after I lost everything, it was about going back to Canada, getting a job, you know, or doing something there. But my girlfriend then, who's now my wife, since for 14 years now, she says, I don't want to go to Canada, you know, look into what Conrad's doing. And that's how I found, you know, that you can make money online with affiliate marketing. Right. Basically. But exactly. funny enough, I did make some money back in the 90s with affiliate marketing when I was in high school. Um, I was promoting my all advantage. I don't know if you remember, you have to be really OG. I don't think I was in the space yet. So Yeah, so all advantage. And I was also promoting like Cyber Thrill Casino. So I used to build these like Juarez sites, like wares or whatever, like pirated apps and stuff. And then I would put banners on it. I would get kick, like paid five cents a click. And on all advantage, you would get paid if you had a banner open while you were using the internet. So I figured out for all advantage that I can actually use a macro and I can get the macro, you know, to look at ads, like pretend that someone's sitting there and click on some random ads that show up, you know. And I made $1,200 when I was like 16 or 15 years old. I was like, holy shit, you know. So, <laughs> but I didn't know it was affiliate marketing, you know. It was just That's funny. You yeah. know, it's funny that you say that because everybody that I know, well, I'm going to say most of the people that I know that, that make a lot of money, some people call them super affiliates, the one that lasts through the decades. Most of them 
have had one or two shady ways of making money online. And, and I'm not saying like breaking the law, but black hat versus white hat. Yeah. You know, like we've all got those stories where, you know, cookie stuffing was a big thing. All those things have been eliminated um, where people still think it's a way to make money. What do you think black hat or white hat for new people? Well, I think when you're young, black hat is way more fun. You know, <laughs> your risk tolerance is higher, but when you have a family, yeah. Then you begin to feel more responsible. Like I have two kids, right? And a family and wife and three dogs. And I have to, you know, I'm responsible for them. So I cannot do some crazy hustle. I could, if I was single, I'd do something insane. And then if, you know, shit hits the fan, I'm like, see, I'm out of here, you know, like go somewhere <laughs> where they cannot catch you, you know, but yeah. this way you cannot do that. So you start to think, okay, white hat, what can I do between the legal limits, you know, that has the maximum ROI kind of thing. Right. So. And a lot of people start to move into gray hat where you're not really breaking the law, but you're not breaking the law, but you're breaking the rules of ad networks. And we've heard of Facebook banning everybody just for logging in sometimes. Um, Where do you think the industry is heading with Facebook and the black hat side and white hat? Um, Do you do you feel like these bans are, are pissing people off enough that it's time to move on somewhere else? Oh, dude. You saw the Facebook stock, right? On how it dropped. Yes. That's because so many people left, you know, like even yeah. at, at Affiliate World Dubai, they were saying like, yeah, I don't run Facebook anymore, man. It's like YouTube ads, Google search and TikTok. It's like screw Zuck, you know, like yeah. he bans you for anything. Like, you know, in the, in the past, he would just disable an ad account and you had like hundreds of other ad accounts in your business manager. And then he started disabling, you know, like the fan pages restricting fan pages from advertising and then he started restricting the personal account from advertising so now you have to face three level bans and there's also a fourth one where they just disable the entire business manager so there's four levels and they come randomly you know it's crazy yeah um i don't know if that's me pinging or you but i'll just eliminate that at some point but yeah the uh I did run a lot of Facebook and it became a point where even running white hat was getting banned. Um, and so I, I, I actually started moving into, I'm one of those people that if, if, if we would have been talking, I would have been saying the same thing. I no longer want to waste my time every day chasing accounts. I'm, I'm looking to run white hat stuff or gray, as long as it's not going to get the ad accounts banned. So in that respect, I've moved a lot into lead generation. You're doing somewhat the same thing. You're moving into that space, I think. And what do you think new affiliates should, should focus on if they want to keep in the rules and still make some money? Do you think lead gen or do you think they should focus on their own website first? What do you think? If they want to make money and they have some income that they can put into affiliate marketing to learn the process, then lead gen is good because um, it's all about getting familiar with the skills, you know. So lead gen is really good, especially like financial lead gen where you can get, you know, paid $1,000 for a conversion. So you can invest the time that you would invest into like a auto insurance offer, which is seven bucks for one conversion to get leads to like a financial lead gen company like Supreme Media, for example. And there you could have a $1,000 a day just from one lead. You never know, right? Right. It's all about matching the, the uh, demand that the advertiser has. So in other words, you know, what kind of person they want signing up with your ads that you run. So if you want people that want to invest in stuff, then you have to craft ads which don't violate policy and somehow sell the idea you know that if they invest in this then they can profit so that's a financial lead to the network and if it converts then you get paid a thousand bucks for one person yeah it's crazy um so we make it seem easy sometimes when we're showing you know some of the training but really in reality as a somebody that does this for a living, you have to be able to deal with losing streaks. And sometimes these losing streaks can be months, weeks, days. How do you deal with losing streaks and cash management? And what is the advice for people coming into the industry so they understand what it really takes to do this for a living? Oh my God, like losing streaks are horrible. Like I know so (laughs) many big affiliates that have been in the space and all of them uh, go through this. 
that's why you know like we have a psychologist to talk to you know because they teach you methods to deal with this depression like there were times where i thought that the dude like the bum on the street with a couple of dollars in his you know in his in his tray was richer than me and i didn't want to drive my car because i thought that i don't deserve it because i'm losing money every day like i'm bleeding red bleeding red bleeding red right. you know yeah. and it's really really tough so you have to the, one of the first things that you have to do is you have to understand that that's just the stage and if you continue and you continue to fail eventually you're going to hit a winner you know yeah and this is what separates the one hit wonders from the serial ogs you know that you know go in you know do the work find something blow it up then it nothing's going to work for a couple of months they understand you know we're searching for the next thing this is a process yeah so, so we're yeah. not buying lambos we're actually putting our money in the bank cuz we know that there's going to be a losing streak and we need to be ready to come back and try another and try another and try another and maybe hold off on that $1000 oil change for our lambos until we're ready to uh Yeah, exactly. You know. Like a lot of uh, like I have a like full-time employees many of them for over 8 years at my company <clears throat> and when these you know these losing streaks come I'm responsible for their salary. Yeah. Exactly. Then they're not preparing stuff for campaigns because nothing's working, but I have to pay them, you know, so I have to, you know, put them to work and all that stuff. And it's tough. So it's all about, you know, planning for the bad times when there's good times and knowing that bad times are going to come after good times. Like it's a real roller coaster. You know, like it's up, down, up, down, up, down. Yep. And recently, and I'm going to say in the last three years, COVID has been good and bad for this industry. Um, in terms of some industries are better, uh, but if anything that's relying on shipping and, and all that stuff and, and customer service, it's, it's probably been super challenging in that respect. So not only do we have a roller coaster, but recently it's been a little harder for some industries in our space. So it's definitely uh, something that you have to be prepared for um, as you build your business and be ready for these these situations in, in terms of cash management and, and, and stuff like that, do you focus on also having something in the back end of your own business? Maybe it's imattila.com or something else that you can always rely on. If everything else hits, if shit hits the fan on everything else, you can still have one project that you focus on that you like. Yeah, exactly. Like I'm always building side projects and stuff like banners, landers, my design company that I started in 2014 you know, that brings in revenue each month. Then right. we have partnerships that we work with that brings in revenue each month. We have the forum. We have Transy. I have real estate investments, like a lot of the big, the, the so-called FU money that I made. Yes, I, put exactly. into, I put into, you know, like uh, buying real estate. So yeah. I have over 20, you know, like different real estates that I bought for cash kind of thing. That's awesome. And they're yeah. all generated they're all generating you know like rental income i their use assets, a proper, yeah. you know their assets they have money in them and they've grown over the years a lot and they're also you know bringing in monthly so if i don't do anything then i still have you know like the day like the monthly expenses all covered and all that stuff yeah. and that really helps to alleviate stress in this industry because i i'm pretty much the same way as you where like people think because I sell a course that, oh, if he's selling a course, he's probably broke. It probably doesn't work anyway. But they don't really understand the industry is where sometimes you just want to have something that you know you can always focus on. It's your baby project, whatever it is. Um, but they're assets. These are pieces of property we're building online that are going to consistently generate income. So the fact that I do YouTube videos or I spend time blogging doesn't mean, I, you know, that you can't trust the information in, in the fact that we're running also several thousand dollars a day in media ad spend, if not tens of twenties and fifties of thousands of dollars a day, whatever the word you want to use. Yeah, but I understand. Um, basically the, the people that say this, <clears throat> they are reflecting from inside of why they would make a course. These people would only make a course if they didn't know how to make money with affiliate marketing and believe that anybody who does a blog, YouTube, or has a course is bad and doesn't make any money with affiliate marketing. And right. there's actually 
quite a few players that are like that, you know, on YouTube. Like there was a clown that was speaking at Affiliate World on main stage. And he's really, you know, like charismatic and extroverted. And he's a great talker, but he has zero clue about what he says. Like as the weather changes, so does, you know, how to make money online and whatever right. he's talking about, you know. Like yeah. he's jumping from crypto to Amazon to Shopify to blogging to I don't know what the hell, you know. So you can do that, you know. So <clears throat> I've seen it. I've seen it in, in watching YouTubers sometimes and then they switched from like being a super affiliate to all of a sudden now I'm a crypto expert, like you said, right? And it's just like, yep. okay, so that's the new trend, I guess, is being a crypto expert or, yeah. Yeah, like crypto is so hard. I know real experts in crypto <laughs> and the amount of knowledge that these guys have, you do not acquire overnight. Like even after watching a couple of YouTube videos, like I've been like heavily invested into crypto for three months just because when I learned that, you know, you can actually uh, generate uh, rewards from staking because i used to think that in order to, to 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 mine bitcoin i mean to mine crypto coins you have to actually have video cards and all that shit you know and i hated that because i i did that for a bit in 2013 like i actually mined a bunch of bitcoins in 2013 when it was 86 bucks but anyways and when i heard this i was like holy crap that's fucking cool you can take money and make money from money just sitting there you know by being like a validator and stuff like that but anyway that's a different topic mm. so these guys that jump into crypto overnight it's impossible that they're an expert because it's so complicated you know like if you right. really are an expert that's funny i have a, a couple of questions i thought were interesting for somebody that has a lot of money what where what traffic source do you think they would have the most success with if they have a lot of money budget doesn't matter and they and they want to scale that's a great and question then, because then I'm ask you the opposite after well, yeah people always money. ask me the opposite yeah and it's like you know it's like a canned response on that one so right. this one is good if you have a lot of money you want to go on the biggest one so google facebook questionable yeah and tiktok ads right always go where there is a lot of um, people because that will allow you scale. And that's how you make millions of dollars. You test, you test, you test, and you're going to hit something that has 100% ROI. And when you scale that up, your ROI is going to go down, but you will have the ability to scale because the platform's huge, you know? So right. definitely the big guys, the big traffic sources. Yeah. And that's funny. Um, and YouTube is another good one. I think for people that have a lot of money, well, that's Google, like you said, <clears throat> um, what kind of offers would you say they should focus on if they have, again, lots of money, um, to run and the best offers, if they were entering into the performance marketing industry, running through a network, the best offers, definitely broad interest diet, Rich people want to make money, but they want to make more money, maybe, or even uh, a little bit more specifically, always think, <clears throat> what do most of your friends need? Ask this question. They need a mortgage, potentially. They need insurance. Right. Auto insurance, most likely. Stupid thing. They need a toilet paper. You know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> Funny in COVID <laughs> times. Right? Oh, I hear you. Like you know, the, like the, the these things, what's pack, common right? that everybody needs? And then see, for example, um, about the toilet paper, because it was so funny having COVID came, everyone's buying toilet paper. They I'm actually, surprised there isn't a, a toilet paper sweepstakes offer for people to run. No, they yeah. actually made some kind of uh, products to save on toilet paper or toilet paper alternatives. So when there was this huge demand, you could actually make a lot of money selling that wow. stuff. You know? yeah. we're, like we're, you get we're such an innovative bunch, this industry, I have to say. Yeah, yeah it is. something hits the mainstream, it's like, boom, there's a landing page already made for it. It's like, it's so funny. I know, it's. I, that's what I love. Like one of the <laughs> other benefits to affiliate marketing next to being able to make lots of money is it's super exciting because there's so many stupid, crazy stuff that you can do, you know? Yeah. Like you can jump, you can, you can, uh, unlike fake gurus who jump from saying that they know something in affiliate marketing, if you're really good, you can jump from selling cups one day to selling horses the other day, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like you can really exactly. jump around because your foundation, your process is the same, you know, like figure out the ad creatives, get the ads made, landers, set it up, run, 
look at traffic, optimize scale, you know, no matter what you're doing. So, yeah, it's, it's funny, man. Um, I, it's funny because I started testing TikTok the other day and well, about a month ago, and I was amazed at how well auto insurance worked. And, and when you say, because it's, it's kind of, I found difficult to target specifically on TikTok because I'm not sure how accurate the targeting is, but I found uh, when you use something broad, since it is some, some would argue a young audience on TikTok who probably need auto insurance um, because they're getting a new car or something. I found it worked best out of most of the things I tested so far. But like I said, I haven't really tested TikTok yet. I'm looking forward to getting into that. Yeah, well, with TikTok, uh, this is a myth that is the young audience. Young audience was in 2018 when they started pushing out TikTok. But these days... The TikTok algo, I don't know if you use it or you have it on your phone. I'm not a TikToker and I don't use it unless my wife sends me some and then I, I watch one and then all of a sudden I'm stuck scrolling. Exactly. Like, so they, they know it. exactly. Yeah. So this is what happens. It, it sucked in a lot of people because it's so fun, you know, it's super yes. entertaining. And every seventh video is going to be an ad on TikTok. Okay. Yeah. So a lot of older people are using TikTok. And yeah, I believe it. Yeah. And if you look at like my, for example, my conversion stats, they reflect that. Like, and also on TikTok, like I also thought that, you know, you have to target. No, you just go broad. And their algo is actually way better than Facebook's. And they will right away know who converts better. That was something I noticed too. When I was trying to target right away in my first testing phase of my campaign, the broad ad group seemed to win every time. Yep. It was weird. And I was like, wow, this is cool. So then every time I started, I was just going full broad. Yeah, exactly. That's what yeah. I do too. You just got to feed the uh, custom events to their pixel. Okay. Yeah. Like, and then it's going to do really good in three <clears throat> days time. Usually it takes three days to stabilize. And after that, it's pretty consistent. That's awesome. So do you think the days of ripping and running are coming to an end? And we really need to be more creative as we move forward? Uh, yeah, definitely on the main platforms. I don't know if they have like an, like some kind of um, detection system in place, which if it saw it already, then it discards it, you know, like a copy or whatever. Yeah. Of course, you can get around this if you're smart. But I mean, for most people, it's really hard to play with hashes and stuff like that. Right. But definitely it's coming to an end just because of the systems being smarter and people already recognizing the stuff. So what I always advocate is to spy, look which, are, which is the top performing creative and throw in your own uh, variation. And right. one area that we like to, you know, to play with and test is authority. Like, for example, in a, with affiliate offers, people tend to react more to stuff they recognize so think color schemes you know like which website do they visit the most and what colors do they use make your lander like that you know stuff right. like that from the people i've talked to and probably from your experience as well uh usually it's the first pioneer on an offer that makes the most money um or are they, are the one that you know, it has a competitive start over somebody else because the people that start ripping and running, as I've seen you mentioned before in some of your posts, usually it's a race to the, the bottom. It is. Uh, yep. Right. So it how, is. Do you, how do you get ahead of the game and what, what resources would you use to try and get ahead of that game um, so that you're the first one testing and, and doing these things? Okay. The, the best we are doing this actually right now. And what we're doing is I have a team which only test new ideas. So I say, here's these offers, get the creatives launched. Let's see what the data says and yeah. just follow the data. And when we see something hitting, then we're going to go test further because usually the first angle, like the first angle that we find that's profitable is not going to be the best angle. We work right. off that and we, uh, you know, like come up with more ideas around that and then test further and have our control and then try and improve and improve and improve. And it takes usually like three, four new tests to find something kick-ass that's going to convert like fire. So, yeah. So there's a less reliance on ripping and running. You might still use adplexity or something like that to get general ideas, but for the most part, you're trying to find new angles and new headlines. And yeah, exactly. Like, let me give you an example. Like in the world of CPA e you can actually look, uh, 
okay, let's say that's September now. And you know that soon the, uh, you know, the winter and the cold is coming. You, you go on to Ad Black City and you check one year ago during that time, which kind of ads did the best. You can sort by, you know, receive the most traffic. And then you craft your uh, game, your mm-hmm. game plan based on what was doing good in that season last year. Mm. Your right away will have creatives done before people realize, shit, it's winter. Oh, I can't run, you know, my, uh, you know, like solar power stuff anymore. Like it's dead, you know, it's not converting. Let's look what's doing good. You already have all the creatives ready based on what was doing good last year. Exactly. People who've been in the game for this long, like uh, yourself and, and myself, where we've been here for over a decade, at least you kind of get a, a sense of what the trends are going to be every year. Everybody knows that diets in the, in the like, this isn't, I mean, you don't need to be a marketer to know that diet is uh, going to be popular in January um, and that kind of stuff. I think what you just explained is a great idea <clears throat> in terms of finding out the trends before they happen and maybe even having a calendar of certain campaigns. I know in my CPV lab, I use CPV lab for my tracking and I have campaigns that really are ready to be turned on in a couple months from now for certain events. Right. Uh, and they're ones that just seem to perform well over the, the year, black Friday, obviously. Uh, then you've got the holiday season. Do you focus more on uh, just broad every year event kind of campaigns, or do you have specific ones that you run throughout the year? Uh, I basically run whatever works until it dies. Yeah, <laughs> I don't have one magic campaign that runs 24 seven, unfortunately. Yeah. You know, so you got to get with the times, especially, you know, offers <clears throat> come and go like a lot of the old opportunities from a couple of years ago, they are not existent anymore. So, yeah, unfortunately, that's the way it is. Yeah, I hear you, man. Uh, I'm going to close with a few more general questions about you and your business. And I, I think uh, we've, we've provided a lot of information in today's video. Um, where do you see yourself in five years? I see myself still doing affiliate marketing. Yeah. You That's know, fun. like affiliate marketing, more like owning my own uh, offers, like, and working closer with uh, big people in the industry, stuff like that. But I, I, I really like this, you know, but what I'm doing different now that I'm older, cause I'm going to be, 39 in September, and I'm going to be 40 next year. So what I'm doing is I'm seeking out a lot of really intelligent, like early 20s, like hungry, you know, energetic, smart people, because it's so refreshing to see, you know, how they're working so hard and they have a million cool ideas and all that stuff. And I'm the investor kind of thing, and I'm guiding them because I have lots of experience. You know, I know lots of people. You know, like they, if they want to go on their own, they couldn't be like, okay, call the VP at Google and get this, you know, like get a credit line for half a million bucks, you know, but I can call them, I call her up and be like, Hey, I need a new agency account with, you know, like this much credit. Can you hook it up? It's like, yeah, yeah. You know, I'll introduce you to this and this, you know, like you get that by being in, in an industry for years and years and, you know, networking. So I'm getting, you know, young people in and they're super fun. And I'm doing less, but I'm doing more, you know, of networking, of being their support, you know, guidance and stuff. And they're doing the actual work that I used to do. So right. that's it's how great. it's changing. That's awesome. So how do you, uh, how do you maintain your work-life balance as you continue? Is, is this what you're aiming towards is getting more people working for you or hitting more events in Barcelona and Dubai? What's, what's your secret? Uh, yeah, like I really like going to the events, like you can meet a lot of people and you talk to them online, but it's different when you meet them, you know, then it really comes through, you know, who you click with and who who you get along with. And that helps elevate stuff, you know, like if you run it, if you're friends with some people online and you meet them like, wow, this dude is awesome. You know, then he introduces you to other people and then it just snowballs. So definitely events. Like I think they're like the lifeblood. Yeah of online marketing and COVID when we didn't have any events, it really left a mark, you know, like when Dubai happened now, like in February, people were like, it blew up. There were so many affiliates and it was like, <laughs> finally we can go, you know, do something fun, you know? So. Yeah. It's amazing what you learn at those events when you're in the private conversations and you're, you know, having a drink or something and you're, and you're shooting ideas off each other. 
it's uh it's amazing what comes i think up. it's very more valuable than sitting in the uh, in the show and like listening to some kind of guru pedal their upsell on the end you know so right or the tracking yeah. software or whatever it is yeah. um yeah. yeah it's funny um <clears throat> three more questions and then i'll let uh I'll let you go because i know you're a busy guy what resources do you use to develop your skills do you have any favorite youtubers or uh courses that you, you, you think um aside from your own training which is obviously great but you must have to train yourself and how do you keep your skills uh yeah that's a great question and you're one of my subscriptions you know you feel like i subscribed <laughs> awesome. to your channel for a long time that's but no great. i have a lot of you know youtubers and new ones come up like i will search for something that i'm interested in see who pops up you know watch a couple of minutes and if i see that they're not bullshit artists like some special guy out there then you know i continue watching and i check out their others and then i subscribe and then that's how it goes you know yeah so, YouTube is a great resource i have to say uh, yeah it is great like for crypto like i'm learning crypto i'm by no means an expert but i'm i'm way more knowledgeable now than three months ago what i did is i actually made a list of all the crypto you know youtubers and i had a va go through the past year and write down all the calls randomly that they made and I wanted to see who has the best, you know, like track record, you know, like they called, you know, that this crypto is going to be this price and, you know, going to go up and stuff like that. And out of a list of 29, only like three of them were spot on, you know, so yeah. it actually helped validate which one is a bullshit artist, which one is actually pretty <laughs> smart, you know, like yeah. there's one run really good YouTuber called the calculator guy for oh, crypto. Yeah. And he makes okay. insane calculators, you know, to calculate impermanent, impermanent loss, but the really advanced way calculate, okay. you know, like if you do like, in, I don't know if you're familiar with crypto, how you can, oh, yeah. you know, you borrow and you, like you loan and then borrow and then, you know, like LP and then the uh, coins you uh, again, you know, put in and then you borrow against them and you go in like circles and circles and circles oh, wow. and yeah. you can do crazy plays, exactly. you know, so. Is liquidity is that what you're talking about? You yeah, yeah, market yeah, maker and all that stuff. Yeah, I'm starting to learn a little bit about that as well. This so. guy's nuts, like, he's so yeah. smart, you know. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah um, so what would you do differently if you could go back in time? I would not stop, you know, mining Bitcoin in 2013. <laughs> 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 so <I'd do. laughs> exactly, I probably would have put some stocks into Amazon, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> about affiliate market. marketing, I would have jumped on more opportunities. Like in 2015, when tech was doing 1000% ROI, I was like, ah, oh, fuck, you know, I'm really happy, you know, scaling my trials and my diet and skin at 200% ROI. I don't have time, you know, uh, if you diversify, then you're going to make less. Fuck that. I should have hired someone be like, okay, you run tech, I run this, you know? Yeah, but, yeah totally. Stupid yeah. mistakes, believing that, you know, if you do too much, you're not going to win. That's why these days, like how I said, I'm hiring young people, making mini teams and then dedicating you guys are on TikTok, you guys are on Facebook, you guys right. are on Pinterest, you know, and so there's it all need, up like this. There's definitely a need for more transparency between you and your team, right? Um, back in the day, you could be a secret guy under his basement and being a lone wolf affiliate. Nowadays, you have to be transparent. This is how we're doing it. This is how we're making money. You got to run this. I'll fund it. Um, I want to cut, you want to cut that kind of stuff. Is that what yeah, that I'm like yes, absolutely. And before I was scared to share, but now I'm like, this is the winning thing. This is how you do it. You guys run it, bring your own strategy, let's make lots of money. And uh we created a really, really good, you know, like salary package for these kids. These these kids, they their parents make like five hundred dollars a month, you know, like in Eastern European countries, and these kids they have the option to make 10k per month so <laughs> so if they're smart exactly you know so awesome. they want to they want to work because the better they do the more they make and that was the secret that i was lacking and i tell them everything and they know you know if they steal the campaign and go on their own it's gonna die because they see campaigns that we run die and then i come with a new thing that i heard exactly the great it's line, a you know it's the roller coaster that they won't survive because of they they don't have the track record. They may, they may, or they may, but you got to take the chance that 
You build yeah, a, like you build a good uh, team and everybody's going to stick around, right? Yeah, that was a change in my mindset, right? Before I was like, ah, oh, they're going to fuck me, you know, and screw yeah. me in the back, steal my campaigns. I'm like, whatever, steal the campaign. You know, it's going to die anyway. I'm going <laughs> to be here after. Steps ahead. Yes. You know, there's actually a funny story about this. Um, in 2000, and I don't know which year, I used to have like my first employee. I gave him too much trust and he hired two of his friends. And they were speaking on our internal chat, you know, that you just watch. If I quit, Attila's going to be destroyed, you know? <laughs> oh, those and messages that you just it's wish. It's so just funny. Didn't... Like I came ah. across this, you know, I came across this chat log on our file server, like on Tagor 2. And I, I, and I showed my wife and we were laughing. Like I made over $10 million, you know, in <laughs> revenue since that point. And the dude lives at home. In his parents' yard, they built like a little house. He lives there. Right. And here I am. Like I have more than 20 apartments, you know, and I have like crazy cars and everything and travel the world with the family. And this dude that wrote to his friend, like, if I quit, you know, Attila's going to be fucked. (laughs) He's living in his mom's backyard. Like it's hilarious, you know. So I've had had employees like that uh, as well. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes. So whatever. I mean, so my mind and my mindset changed if someone wants to screw you they're gonna do it anyways no matter how careful you are you know it's true man it's true yeah so whatever let them screw you but if you surround yourself with good people and you pay them well yeah and they're actually really good people they're not gonna screw you because they're gonna be happy so that's that's the difference that i am adopting as i get older before i it wasn't like this well that's awesome man that's good advice very good advice um Let's finish with this question. Where can people get more information about you and your business? Some more cool strategies that you talk about. What's what's your future in, uh, and where's your website that we can go? Okay, to? so I recommend that everybody checks out my blog at IamAttila.com. I've been updating with lots of free advice since 2013. And it's one of the top affiliate marketing blogs. And I was, you know, featured in magazines like Search Engine Journal and tons of other, like, I don't know them because there's always new ones, but all the big authority sites in the online marketing industry, like even tabula.com, outbrain.com, all of them, you know, listed me as like one of the top affiliate marketing blogs. So check that out. And if anybody wants one-on-one help, you know, navigating this space, then join my forum. I don't have a course and I'm never going to have a course because things change so fast that by the time I create a course, it would be dead. That's why it's best. And that's why I believe if you want to learn affiliate marketing, join a private community like IamAffiliate.com, which is only 50 bucks a month. But if you're starting affiliate marketing, you post your questions and we'll give you real answers that are the actual answers so you can, you know, make money. Yeah. No bullshit. 100%. I have to vouch for that. Um, Your blog has been inspiring to me. I've seen some of your case studies. Um, uh, And and back to just the one question I forgot to ask you, people with low amounts of money who want to advertise, there's a ton of good case studies on your blog around push traffic, around running sweepstakes, domain traffic, all these other traffic sources out there that you talk about and focus on for people getting into the business and also you talk about high scale campaigns as well. So um, all I got to say is thanks for joining today. That was amazing. I think we gave a lot of uh, great information. You especially uh, have been in the industry for so long. And it's, it's, it's helpful to me to think that you are also thinking that you'll see yourself in the affiliate marketing space in five years from now, because there's a lot of stuff going around the internet that says affiliate marketing is dying. It's not dying. It's just the old methods die. There's always new ways to make money, right? Absolutely. The old method is not like it used to be, but I mean, if life was constant, always the same, it would be so boring, right? Mm. So it's all about if you're a serial entrepreneur and you really enjoy, you know, challenges and stuff, then this is an amazing space. If you don't enjoy that, you don't enjoy nonstop learning, then it's going to eat you alive. So I don't recommend it for that kind of people. For those people, I recommend becoming a freelancer and offering your time for some kind of special talent that you have. Like I mentioned earlier, copywriting, design, programming, accounting, or whatever, because that's going to give you, you know, you put in X time and you get Y out. So yeah, exactly. That's the best way to go. Okay. Well, thanks again. We'll end it there.
It was a pleasure. It was awesome. Right. Thanks, man. Talk to you later.